Something by Sean Cardavillis, who sat down with a former part-time actor, former rugby player turned coach, and currently an expatriate here in Nairobi, Kenya. His name is Danny Ligleri. I hope I've gotten that correct, <laughs> Sean. So let's hear more from him and his love for rugby. Let's check that out. In England, that we have uh, state schools and public schools. I didn't like rugby much. Um, I was always uh, judged as they said, why did you run so fast? And I said, well, if I got caught, I would get hurt. So I was putting my head in scrums, not understanding, found, fell in love with the shorter game of sevens at my state school, which is just a normal basic school in England. Um, and then juggled it around with professional basketball and professional rugby. In 1962, 212 Fijians joined the British Army. 12 nurses, 200 men. Seven joined the British Special Forces um, and two to train and become some of the elite. Um, I am the son of a, a former officer who actually has been to Kenya. And uh, I grew up in Worcestershire and it was, it was everything from there, basically. Back in the 90s, Europe against those barriers and, and the constraints of um, education, public school, state school, um, being, a, being the only coloured boy in the team, um, but could run fast. And I went through my career playing for the local club, which is the Premiership Club called Worcester. And from there, um, I, you, you, you do when you're in, it's like living in Nairobi. You, you play for one club and not enjoy it for the first couple of years. You'll move to the club that is their rivals or you just, and I did that. Um, and I learned a lot. I've played under the great Glenn Ella, been selected by Ian McGeekin for Northampton to go and train with them. Um, and then I went back to basketball for a while at, at, at pro level and then fell in love with rugby again and then ended up at Quinns and then uh, rugby league after that. Going back to 2002 and um, I was working for England Rugby as a development officer and I was also involved with Fiji. And the, we met up with the teams and Kenya arrived and they just had no kit. And uh, the coaches at the time just didn't know what to do. No kit had turned up, nothing. And the only kit they, they were given was football kit. So we went from there and I am quite happy and proud to say that I supplied the first ever tight kit for Kenya rugby. So 2002, the, Oscar, uh, the Lucas and Yangos um, and Charlie and all those guys from here, they wore the kit that I designed, which was the tight fitted jerseys with the tight uh, sleeves. So my love for Kenya started then. Um, we met them all and they trained on the same grounds as we did with Fiji. We played loads of games against them. Um, and Lucas and Yango stayed in Manchester and we bump into each other time and time again. But since the project started, he's come on board. So my love for Kenya is, goes deeper than a lot of people just think I'm coming out here to do good things and just enjoy sport. It, it, there's a lot of love there between the Kenyans and Fijians. Last year, associated with non well, the year before I was approached, apologies, to uh, come in and look at how non were doing and they needed a development structure because they had no junior sides, uh, the no community programme. Um, and just were not having a great time at, the, at that moment. So I was flown out and then I did all the local CRA patrons community work, travelling to Ngong, off to Embu, to see what Kenya Rugby was about. Um, but prior, just prior to that, we had a project in Luxembourg where we were going to bring uh, a number of children from Kenya, Fiji, South Africa to Luxembourg to study. We called it the Barefoot Project. And we contacted Nondis and before I flew out and said, look, we'll take a couple of the boys. So we had two boys, one from the Ngong Township and one from Kabir. And just like the movie uh, um, Cool Runnings, these young boys arrived in Luxembourg to snow alongside four Fijians who'd never been on airplanes too. So in 74 days, we'd arranged passports, visas, flights, clothing, support, funding. Um, it's a lot easier for a company to support a child from over here to fly than handing over the cash. So we did that and then I arrived to meet them personally and went visit their families and ensure that the children would grow up. And they had three months of education in uh, Luxembourg, learning French, German and sciences and learning how to use the computers, which they'd never get a chance here because of the lack of facilities and equipment. So then I stayed out and we travelled there and then I returned again in July to observe the, the transition from Nondis. Um, as you know, uh, they were really struggling last year um, and see how it goes. And one of the advices that I gave as a consultant was, you need to build within, you don't need outside coaches. You need to develop 
your coaches and your club from, from the people around you, the environment around you. So, and, and that's continued. And then this other trip, the third trip has been more about uh, continuing the work that all these clubs do, but using my expertise in England and Europe with, and global now, with uh, community development to help the, the country, not, sorry, not only the clubs, but the country grow. I watched the Kenya team play, uh, I could have been, I think Zimbabwe, would it, would it have been, in the last year in July? Full on contact, no game plan, no man management. And I was just like, okay, you're spending money on these guys, but it's the individuals you need to spend the money on the time to develop their skills. You can have two great coaches, but if you're not developing the individuals, there's no point. You, you, you can do tactics, but if one guy is one minute too late or taking too late, you're losing the turnover. So I watched that game, um, and I saw a few others, and I've been watching the Sevens, and I just think you have to, I know you're building within with the Sevens project, and I know the politics around Mike Friday as well, and having played alongside him and against him, and the, him and Ryan, the same age, went into coaching. I continued playing, because I was already a coach before they took coaching, and knowing the passion that they have. So uh, Kenya Rugby still massively needs to Think about growing the, the, their own coaches. Think about, um, I think the development structure is more about the individuals because Kenya Club Rugby has to have a, we, we don't have a huge export, do we? And we don't have a huge import other than a couple of the clubs now have brought in some South Africans. Well, no, God knows why. But for me, looking at the fact that you have the athletes so why not invest in the time to deal with the, the athletes themselves? Raising the standard of club rugby will then develop the national team rugby. Um, it's, it, the issue for me is, and I will say this openly, I see too many Kenyan boys looking at the pipe dreams of the sevens, outside the sevens, wanting to be a poster boy, chasing a dream, but they won't leave this country. They won't go to France. You'll have one or two, and they'll, they'll, or they'll go to England. But... It's all about looking good at home. It's very much like the Fingier mentality. We have family and culture and religion first before we actually think, and then they forget about themselves. So I think Kenyan rugby needs to look about their players, not about their teams. Um, it's always work on the individual's progression for the team to work. And that's been one of my ethos in years of rugby and, and in sport, work on the individual's progression. Don't tick the boxes, work on the results of those individuals.